Hey, welcome to Cabin Fever. I'm Jake Berry, and today, back again uh, from Channel 5 News, Channel 5 Sports, is Alex Del Barrio. Welcome, Alex. Uh, how was your weekend? Uh, um, a little relaxing after about maybe 2 o'clock <laughs> when, when when certain events started to come uh, come down. I'll just say, leave it at that. Uh, but yeah, pretty, pretty relaxing. Uh, we had a pretty interesting week uh, in football. Um, not so much for pro for the pro teams that I support, but that's that's another story. But uh, uh, overall, overall solid solid weekend, and looking forward to another strange week of high school football after we've already had two games for this week already take place after Monday. Yeah, and, and what was your take on that? Having you know Monday games because they don't even do that during a regular year for sub varsity, and then to have it on a Monday. What was that? What was your impressions? I mean. In, it, it w- I think when the schedule started to come out, we st- co- sort of knew because other places in the state were, were talking about the play every five days, especially like the small school uh, that were still dealing with county orders. They were trying to find creative ways to get, um, you know, their, their games in and their district games in so they could compete for a playoff spot before they started splitting into zones and things like that. So we kind of knew that there was going to be a possibility that we'd see districts go to this every five day schedule. And uh, it just so happened 16, five, a one ended up in that situation with all the quarantines uh, that ended up happening. I think what four schools in the district have already, it might be even more have had to deal with some sort of quarantine um, whether it's because they faced a team or they've had positive tests themselves. Um, but uh, certainly a strange day to have to cover two high school football games on a Monday. Yeah, you normally, uh, you never, never would have thought that we'd see that. But we had Wednesday games last week. Wednesday, to me, Wednesday is the more surprising thing because Wednesday has always been the off-limits yeah. student activity day, right? Because that's the church, that's FCA, that's, uh, you know, it's usually kind of like religious time. Um, you know, depending on whatever, whatever religion you happen to be, that's kind of the day designated during the week, you know, for religious activities and very few, if any student activities outside of, you know, uh, ones that are connected to like FCA or other religious, uh, entities. Um, so that's the more surprising thing to me is that we see Wednesday games on the schedule. Cause that's always been, if, if you do nothing, you know, stay away from Wednesdays. Yeah, and, and last night, um, Palmview played. Uh, they played Donna. And surprisingly, you know, this was a team who was bringing back the nucleus of their running attack. And yeah. they uh, they fell to Donna last night. What was your take on that? I mean, I, I want everyone to be clear. Palmview's practiced maybe yeah. six times in the last two weeks. Um when I say practice, I mean, they've had workouts and they've had you know, the Zoom uh, activities and, and, and things like that. But in terms of being on the field, wearing pads, no helmets, I mean, they have not practiced. Um, I'm I'm a little surprised and I haven't look, gone up and down their roster. I, I don't know if there's been any kids that have transferred from La Jolla or Juarez Lincoln to Palmview to try to, to get a season in because those two schools didn't play. Um, but I thought I thought that they had enough back offensively to kind of do a little bit more. We saw it in their first game uh, in where they were mounting, you know, mounting um, a pretty good offense in the second half. And then this time it just didn't seem to come together, but it was a strange situation. Like the game was played at Palmview at the high school. Like it wasn't played at LJISD stadium because there's an issue with the lights. I mean, 2020 what's going on. (laughs) Um, So obviously, so zero home field advantage and, and, You know, Donna, I I think question is still out on how good maybe Donna is because we haven't seen a lot of them. New coach, uh, Mike Gonzalez coming in out of Westlake East. Um, This was going to be a team that's going to be a a little different than what we're used to seeing from Donna teams. So um, I don't know if I don't, Jake, I'll be honest. I don't know what you can tell from any of these games this season. I really don't. Uh, Outside of the top three teams in the Valley, uh, four teams in the Valley maybe, it's a roll of the dice, I think, uh, every single night, to be honest. Yeah, and, and you know, Mackay last night played row, and you thought, okay, the, you know, 
Mack High's played against two running teams. We'll see how they do against a spread team that is Rowe. And it was actually an entertaining game. I, my, my buddy Mark May was on the call last night, and I, I watched the game, and I, I was impressed offensively from both sides. They, they, were, they were pretty good, and there were some tough hits in that game. Yeah, I thought Hunter Curls had really been coming into his own uh, as a quarterback these last few weeks. And um, I think it goes to show just how talented that kid is and um, that there's there's they're taking like that, you know, when you have a rebuilding program and a rebuilding team, there's like these, these there's losses that you can point to that say this was a step up game for them where they took their play to the next level. They may not have won the game, but they, they took a step forward. And I kind of felt that way about Mac High last night. Rose really good, uh, I think. I think all things considered, in if all things were equal in a full season, we'd be talking about McGal Memorial and Rowe kind of at the top of fifteen Division One, right? Um, I don't, I, I don't know how you could properly evaluate that entire entirety of the district because you got, you know, the the zone in Brownsville and you've got the zone kind of over here. But I, I would think that those two schools combined with Wesleyan East would would be competing for for the district championship um so i thought it was a pretty good out, out, uh showing of of mac high when what they were able to do to compete but good great showing by bobby flores's club uh from being able to finish it off there at the end yeah i, I do think Rowe has a diamond in the rough they, they've got a good running game right now with Meehan uh and, and the others that they have there but i think that they have the best tight end in the valley and Gustavo Cruz. I mean, at six three, you know that that's enormous. And here in the valley, you know, you don't you're not going to find a tight end down here that uh, that can run like him. But I, I do think Rowe's pretty good. Um, what are your other big games for this weekend or week? Well, let's see, let's see what's what's remaining on the schedule right now. What do you, what uh, do you think about Hannah and Harlingen High? So Hannah. Uh, is not playing Harlingen High. Oh, they aren't. What Westlake is playing Harlingen High. See, the schedule uh, is so screwed. I don't know how you do it as a sports guy. Yeah, so I, I've I've kind of got it in front of me. I've, I've had to make because I've been. I, I usually start building it on Sundays and and just kind of start double checking. Uh, I'll, I'll give you for an example. Like Ed Couch isn't playing this week. They're off this week. They were originally supposed to play uh, PSJ Memorial, I believe, but now they're pushing back to an off week. They're going to play. I think PSJ Southwest next week when they come out of quarantine and then play PSJ Memorial at the end of the season. And that's what their zone is going to look like. So um, let, let's, why don't we start, start with the playoff games, Jake, with okay. the four, a, four A's and below um, Hidalgo taking on Alice. I thought Hidalgo kind of surprised me that they lost to Zapata uh, in their last game. Cause Hidalgo had been dominant, especially after what they did to Laferia to lose to Zapata kind of surprised me. Um, but, you know, I don't know how they – the one thing about uncovering high school football is because there's so many games and you're not watching the games from start to finish. So it's hard to evaluate, like, did they play everybody? Did they really try? Did they try to stay healthy for the playoffs? Because Sadalgo had already locked up their spot and their seed. So they take on Alice, who's kind of had a down year, and they've had a ton of bouts with COVID there. They've had quarantines. They've had to cancel games and all types of stuff. They played in Falfurious. Um, I like it all those chances to, to advance. It's really like the, I think it's really the only sub five, a team um, that I can see advancing, to be honest with you. Uh, Cal Allen's taking on Gruya. I don't, I don't think the Gators really have much of a shot. Uh, Raymondville's taking on divine divine's been good all year and they show you the difference. Divine's played 10 games, one, eight of them. Raymondville's played two games, none of them district games. So uh, that just goes to show you know, what the difference is in uh, in play. And then Laferia taking on uh, Corpus Christi Miller. Um, that one I think will be close, but ultimately I think Miller will win that game. But, uh, uh, but I think Hidalgo's got the best shot to advance this weekend. Wow, okay. And um, besides your playoff games, what would you say is your next up? What's your game of the week, I guess, so, for you guys? So, so I've got um, – so, Erica's is going to be going to our game at uh, at Cabinus Field, Laferia at Met Miller on Friday, um, but Monica will be uh, at the Westlake Harlingen game. So they moved basically they moved that Westlake Harlingen game up, um, and they went to that you know the the you know thirty two six A is lucky because there's not that many teams in the district, so they're able to kind of prioritize you know zone play. But remember, Westlake's only played one game. That was this week. It was their first game of the year uh, after they had some early season COVID situation. And then Harlingen, 
Harlan just looked really good uh, over the last uh, two days, which I think we could expect. So that that's kind of at the top of my list. Um, but the one that I think is interesting, Jake, as far as a, a, a dark horse interest, like I, th- one of the questions I'd asked on the podcast last year of the coaches, remember I had my questionnaire at the end, mm-hmm. uh, was always if you weren't at your at your game this week, what game would you go to? If that if that was me this week, what game would I go to? Uh, if I could just pick any game, it'd be West Lake East and Porter on Thursday. Um, I think Porter is like we've talked about before, kind of the, the year every year it's a different Brownsville school that kind of takes the step forward. This year it's it's Porter for me. I, I think there were signs of it last year, but uh, Carlos has really done a great job uh, over there, and they've got a finally a veteran team. And I'm not saying they'll beat Wesleyan East. I, I certainly don't believe that. I, I, I would, in fact, I'd make Wesleyan East a ten point favorite in that game if I was. Uh, Wesleyan East has played one game. Porter has already played a few, and they've looked really strong in each of their games. And everyone I've talked to in Brownsville, is, I'm like, "Hey, is Porter for real? Is Porter for real?" Like, like, yeah, Porter's for real. The quarterback's really good, and um, they just got a bunch of smart, pl- smart veteran, varsity experienced players now. What about you? Um, I don't know. I've been looking at this. And you know what? If you would have asked me um, a week ago where I would go, um, I thought Memorial and Palmview was going to be a really good one because I like those running t- – the t- very similar d- offenses. But Palmview, like you said earlier, has not really um, had the time to really mature into into the team that they were last year, and yeah. which, which sucks for them. Um, but no, I'm looking, I'm, I'm like, I'm looking right now for a game. like, you got, that's the thing you brought up the Saturday games. Like there's, there's three Saturday games. Um, I forgot about Lifer. Lifer's playing Palacios. I think Lifer's got a shot that that's a Saturday game. Uh, but mission, mission battle Conway's this week too. They moved that game from Friday to Saturday. That's a noon start at Tom Landry stadium row row and Donna, I think is interesting, especially after what Donna did this week, uh, Donna looks like they can play some defense. Um, the way they've been holding opponents um, a little bit here this this last week, or what they did against Palmview, to be honest, at least from a rushing perspective. And you've got a, if you got a good rush defense against Nikki Rowe, you should should bode well. I like Nikki Rowe in the game, but again, and and those are two teams that will face off uh, who have, who played on a fri- uh, played on a Monday that are playing five days later. Um, so so we'll see. I, I like your thought on Palmview McCall Memorial just because those are two teams that obviously run the ball a lot that's a game that'll be over game starts at five game will be over by six thirty. So, so um you know that's always a good one if you're trying to get some shopping in after the game but uh but but i think i think there's some interesting i think the other one i think is uh interesting too is um um los residents harland and south i think both of those teams are kind of coming off some really tough losses and they're trying to what, what do we talk about in 32 6 eight? Who's going to be the fourth team? You know, it's okay. always Harlan's always going to be at the top. And usually, was, you know, in the past, it had been, you know, West Lico East with, when they were in 32 6 eight for a while. And then they obviously were at 31 last year. But now this year, it's like, it looks like Hannah's, Hannah and Harlan are the, are the top teams. And then it's like San Benito, Los Fresnos, um, and Harlan's and South kind of duking it out for those, for those last couple of spots. So, uh, yeah, well, I mean, I think I think that one that one will tell you a lot, kind of going in. Los, I like Los Fresnos, but they they were they were shut down by Hannah this last week, so you know, kind of we'll see. Yeah, and, and I really like I like what happened. You, you know, if you remember a few years back, Brownsville schools were kind of laughed at, like you know, it was yeah. those games that everybody kind of like marked down as as. You know, as wins. As wins. I want to say probable wins. No, they were, they were let's, wins. let's call a spade a spade, man. Like yeah. that's when and, and and they know it too. And and here's the difference now: guys like Carlos Oresti, guys like Mark Guess, you know, the, they're running their programs, and you know, it's this. It's the same. I think it's the same thing in all the programs now in Don in, in Brownsville. Like it, with the exception, I think of David Cantu, because I don't think he, he yeah. he's a very cerebral guy. He's not going to, he doesn't use that competitive uh, mindset in terms of like chip on a shoulder bulletin board material, but they all use it as I think motivation that, that this is what they think of us. This is what they think of Brownsville football. And, and I think they're finally using that as a, as, as the water boy would call it tackling fuel. 
you know? <laughs> yeah, it, but, you know, I, I like I, I like Hannah. I, you know, I've been impressed. They, uh, they have probably, uh, no offense, you can use this as bulletin board material. They have the ugliest colors probably in the Valley. And, Stop. And the UPS. Stop. I, I'm not a big fan of the colors, but I do think, man, that program was from night and day of what it was maybe, what, five years ago, four years ago, when, like, you know, I think I was still doing TV, really, and then even after that, you know. It's, hey, can we talk, have you seen uh, Hannah's new gym? No, I have not. They used to have the smallest gym in the valley. They, they had the, they, let's be honest, calling it spade a spade. They had the worst gym in the valley. They did. You know? uh, like, I, I, I mean, played a couple it, playoff games. It, it, it's it's something that like you wouldn't like you wouldn't put in a junior high. You know, like it was it was that bad. But they didn't have a space for it, and they finally were able to figure out how they were going to reconfigure that campus. And Mark, Mark, Mark again to Mark Guess's credit, in and 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 really the whole athletic department there uh, at, at Brownsville ISD. You know, figuring out ways to kind of improve the facilities on campus and now they have a nice new um, facility there for uh, they showed the floor the other day on, on Twitter and it, it looks awesome you know and, and that's a program that, that that's earned it because we're by the way Jake we're in basketball season I don't know if you know this like yeah I do and you know what I here's one thing I do feel for basketball coaches because <laughs> most of your athletes I mean unless you're at a basketball rich school like Vela somewhere like that where you can specialize most most teams have football players or volleyball players that are basketball players and those coaches right now are having to deal with trying to figure out this is you know different than than regular years they're not going to have them for almost when they they get to you know district play so it's going to yeah. be hard to district plays it might look ugly the first couple of games yeah i i i kind of agree with that uh, especially cuz we're not you know, we've got till December 4th before the regular season is over. Regular season is over for football. Mm -hmm. We've got four more weeks of this stuff. So, um, or three more weeks of, oh no, four more weeks of this stuff. So, you know, we've got a whole month before we even get to playoffs. And, and you know, it looks like we'll have a couple of teams at least make a, a, a you know, a couple of rounds uh, in the playoffs. So we're, we're already into mid-December. We're already at the, at the Christmas break before this is, this is kind of all said and done. So, uh, this is kind of a again just a weird year, and uh, who knows what what the future holds. But um, but yeah, it, it's it's um, uh, it's weird for for those coaches. I remember I remember playing, um, and I use I use playing the word playing very liberally when I talk about my varsity basketball experience. But I, I remember just how like those first couple of games and maybe that first tournament, and we're not going to have tournaments this year. But it was kind of an opportunity for you to kind of showcase a little bit if you were a guy that was kind of on the cusp of being in the rotation um, because the football guys hadn't shown up yet or they just got there and they weren't in shape. So they were only going to play 10, 12 minutes in the game unless you had like a super, super athlete, you know. Um, but but yeah, I always I always can um, I always thought that, the, you know, the first month of the basketball season is always like you can't you can't even really tell who's good or not, especially because the good teams always end up playing playing in tournaments uh, against really crappy teams so they yeah. can boost their record. Uh, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not calling anyone out there. Um, I'm just going to leave it that. But it happens. But it happens. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's interesting because a lot, depending on the basketball teams that you're looking at, you might have a team that the coaches, you know, they, they want to schedule some tough competition, like Manny Gomez, that kind of stuff. Yeah. There are some basketball coaches that are just like some football coaches. They put the sisters of the tw of the poor right away, <laughs> and you know they 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 looks really awesome. You know, we I mean, when you're six A's and you're playing you're playing Progresso and you're playing you know, yeah. Santa Maria. You know? <laughs> I, I will say this: one of the toughest games that I got to see was when um, uh, when I was at Edinburgh High, and we had those really great, great basketball teams, and then we go and schedule Santa Rosa when Santa Rosa was going. Oh, but that's different. That's different. And and that's one of those things. That's different. And, and a lot of people are like, well, that's, you know, how could you lose to a, you know, a single A team or, a, or you know, 2A, 1A, you know. Look, when you're Santa Rosa um, and you have the talent that they had, man, that that was, I put that program up with just about every program. Mack High with J.J. Avila and, and that company, uh, Aaron Olvetta in Edinburgh. I put them up there with that, even the Vela teams, because – that program has survived for multiple years without the type of population of a yeah. five, 5A, 6A. So I've always had this question. I think we've talked about this before. But if if basketball – and I hate saying this because you you and I are both basketball people. You know, mm -hmm. you, you, know you went to South Dakota State. 
Uh, so like, you know, they've got such a great program. You, you are in love with the Duke basketball program to this day. Um, so you college basketball means a lot to you. I do college basketball for CBS. Um, so basketball is a big part of our lives, but if basketball mattered here in South Texas or in Texas in general, if basketball mattered at the high school level. And when I say matters, I mean, in, like what it matters in Indiana, what what it matters in, um, you know, Michigan and other states that were, were the state basketball champion is just as important as if not more than would Johnny Soprano would like where like, don't you think we'd be seeing him be recruited by these 6A programs to try to maybe either maintain or create a legacy, you know, and, and try to poach him off of uh, off of Santa Rosa? You know, and, and that's the weird thing because I would think it would happen more often. I mean, yeah. um, um, you know, I, I know of programs that want to steal football coaches left and right. You know, you make it four rounds deep, three rounds deep, people want you. Basketball is a little weird because, like, you would think that, say, uh, when PSJ North opened up, uh, the position opened up last year, you could just move them right into that position. And, yeah. and, 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 I think it's hard too because Santa Rosa was one of those. It's a community like Roma that just lives and and eats basketball, right? And, right. You right. know, and they want it. They they want to have that. You got to find that right that right community. I think Vela, that kind of stuff. I mean, could you imagine? You know, uh, and I'm I'm good friends with Lucio Rodriguez, but when when Lalo left, could you imagine him moving into that position? Yeah. You know, to have all those horses. I mean, I don't know. I think he, it, it might have been like, uh, you know, uh, the embarrassment of riches right there because you're, you're going into a program where you can just make that thing explode. Right. And I'm surprised more people haven't done it. Um, and and I, I do think there's opportunity. Like, I think he has opportunities there to advance as deep as he does um, as consistently as they have. Uh, just be, uh, be, maybe because they're at the 2A level. Or three A level, I should say. Is it three? I I, I, I can't remember what they are. I, I think it's two A. I think it's three. I think it's two A. Uh, I need to go back and check because it, it it they they've changed the classifications on me so many times that I don't know what's what. Um, but but what I'm saying, I guess my point is is that uh, I think there's certain opportunities for him. He's he's from the area, so it's not like, you know, it's not like he's looking to leave either. I just find it interesting because when we cover sports the way we do, we talk about like guys, you know, at mid-major programs or low-major programs, they have a good year, they win a game or two in the tournament, and then all of a sudden, you know, a Power Five school that didn't make the tournament is looking to to hire and 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 bring that guy in, and you start to see that, you know, that silly season and movement in college basketball coaching. Um, but you don't really you don't really see that at the high school level. You see it at high school football, but you don't see it in, in high school basketball, which I think is weird. Yeah, and, and that's a weird thing too because uh, on another front, offensive coordinators they're yeah. not scooped up as much as as one might think down here. It's almost like there's a retreading of old football coaches, and nothing against that. But I'm saying that there are some really good OCs and DCs. Um, Rene Guzman from West Laco East, his he's the defensive coordinator there. They've had the most stout defense for years now, and how that guy does not have a head football coaching job. If I was a what's, program, what's the deal with that? I, I I have to think about like jobs that he's applied for because we always get the lists that end up coming out. I'm trying to think is he what is he has he applied for anything recently? I'm just asking out of I don't curiosity. I don't know I don't I don't think so. And you know he's an Edinburgh guy too. I would have thought somebody in Edinburgh would have scooped him up for one of the positions whenever it was it came open. But yeah. he, he has yet to to really. Um, you know, I don't know if he's thrown his name in the hat. I don't want to speak for him, but I think he's wonderful. Uh, my my good friend at, at uh, Pioneer, uh, Eddie Galindo. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. If you're if yeah. you're if you're an athletic director and you have not scooped him up, you're on crack. I mean, you really because he is wonderful. He's a baseball guy too, man. Yeah, and you baseball know he's, guy. Smart he's from Raymondville. Guy. Played for or he coached with uh, Coach Vela at Edinburgh. Mm -hmm. um, you know he he's put in work. He's not he, he's not a young guy, but he's not old either he's right there he's a little bit older than me so he's 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 in that spot where you know he's veteran enough to 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 take the helm I and mean, we got young guys getting jobs now so i mean i don't know but, but, I, but I don't mind that i yeah. don't mind that you know like 
if if this had been the era 20 years ago, guys like Mike Evans wouldn't have gotten his job uh, at PSJ Southwest as early as he did. I'm glad, and, and Mike Mike is, is worked worked his butt off in in the time he was a coordinator and was considered like you're talking about now about uh, you know Galindo and Guzman. He was considered in the Valley one of the sharpest young coordinators out there and got an opportunity. Uh, but look at how long Lupe had to be an offensive coordinator down in the Valley before he got a job at PSJ. Like, you know, yeah, yeah. And, and, and look at look how that worked out. <laughs> you know, right? Like, uh, you know, it, it's it's taken it 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 takes some and he's a name. He led the state in passing and 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 was part of Mission Veterans programs that like killed it offensively. Yeah. You know, one time he was at, at Valley View, like they, they killed it offensively when he was there. Like, so it's not like he didn't have a track record of success. Um, so I, I always think it's interesting, but, but you have to think of, because, because there are so many programs here, think about it. If there's, if there's 50 programs now, that means there's a hundred coordinators, right? So if all of those coordinators applied for a singular job that comes open, you know, the the odds are the odds are still kind of against you, and that's not even considering the former head coaches that are kind of now out. You know, look at you know look at some of the head coaches that have had some decent success that are out of coaching right now. Um, so you know, it's just it's always an interesting an interesting thing. One thing I do want to bring up, I I, I don't think I, I I really hope that administrators don't make moves um, because of this season. Oh no! This is a wash. You, uh, I, if if you're really looking at this season as a marker, for, oh, sorry, if you're looking at this as a marker for why your team, you know, uh, for getting rid of a coach, there's no growth. There is no growth this year. I mean, no, you, it, can't, you, were, you can't do it. You can't. It was going to be too hard. So yeah, I, I, I completely do. I just wanted to make sure that point because obviously, like, and, and I'm not one of these coaching carousel guys. I'm not going to get on my Facebook page and and say that this guy needs to go like some other people, but I, I, I will say, but I will say like, you know, it's something that we follow obviously. Um, but I'm also in the camp of people that like, I would prefer coaches get a longer leash at the high school level, especially in the Valley. I mean, I think the expect any expectations to go beyond the third round of the playoffs, uh, by any administration are, um, unrealistic i'm not saying don't have those goals i'm saying don't have those expectations those are two those are two very different things and expectations from coaches are very different than expectations from administration these people you know these people and along with the people who are below the head coach the coordinators and the assistant coaches who are teachers you know it, it's tough to move from district to district and team to team you know it's just it, it's a weird and hard uh it's a weird and hard life so uh, you know I, I think stability is is a, is a better is a better thing for for programs than than just you know willy nilly firing and things like that. Yeah, I think in high school, I mean, look, pros, college, you're looking at a three year window. Three right. is like the, the the minimum of what you give a coach because you know he's got to be able to recruit and bring it all in there. At the high school level, you can't recruit unless you're some programs. But um, <laughs> you know, you, you want to. I really think you need five years at the high school level to really at five years that you haven't you know, made a mark. Yeah, that's on you. But at three, you're just getting your your program where you want it to be. You know, you've grown the middle school level all the way up. By four, you got to show some dividends by really by year three, you need to show some 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 increases. But by four, you know, that's where you put it on. And then by year five, you really need to be there. You know, that gives you enough room to to grow your your farm system. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And I, I think too, like, you know, being pragmatic about again, the program and the, and where you're recruit, not recruiting, but where you're getting fed from in terms of yeah. junior highs and things like that need to be considered uh, when making those types of evaluations. And we need to stop making evaluations based on who we know and who's, you know, family and who's, who we went to high school with and things like that. Um, yeah, that never, that. but that never happens. Um, but yeah, and, and I do think this too, if you're a, uh, a district or board or athletic directors and you're making your choice that you want to switch up the offense tremendously, like if you want to go from ground and pound to spread, you got to give it time because it takes years to get that to where it was, especially when you had a coach there for so many years that was strictly, you know, I'm going to run it between the tackles. Right, right. 
because that's what they've been learning since the seventh grade. Yeah, and so I, I do think you need to give them time to adjust. But uh, but yeah, um, but yeah. Um, hey, so by the way, we haven't talked since you got your new set. How do you mm-hmm. like your new? How do you like your new set? I I did see some pictures online. Uh, it looks really nice too. I, it's I pretty fancy. Something. Yeah, it's pretty fancy. Um, I, I, we love it. Um, we, it. You know, obviously we've seen it for a while. We've seen the rend- we saw the renderings way before they started putting it together and all that stuff. I think I think there are still some challenges with it, um, but I think the challenges also come with uh, opportunities to be creative. Um, because if you notice, kind of the wall that we're using for sports, and 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 it's not it's not the only set. Like there's another set that's coming down the road. It, which is more of an interview set. If you people remember the old sports set, it's kind of in that same area with a more of a traditional monitor. And it also will have a vertical monitor, which we'll be able to use for some things. We're still trying to figure out how that's going to fit in, in the long term of, and how it's going to work. But, um, but, but it's part of our, you know, kind of our long-term planning for the future. But one of the things that I, I like about the set, especially the one we're using in sports is kind of a, it's a very narrow um, video wall. It's not a full wall uh, like the one on the main new set is, but it allows us to kind of put different kind of animations and different and kind of different things in there. It's almost, I, I try to think of it from a, like a ribbon board perspective. Like if you go to arenas and you see the, the kind of the ribbon boards that kind of circle around the, around the arena, I kind of think of it from that perspective. I think what looks good reading from left to right, as opposed to what just looks good on a monitor. So instead of just throwing up a Cowboys logo or a Cowboys helmet, I can put up a logo with a headshot of who the quarterback is that week and the, the word mark Cowboys or whatever. So, um, you know, we're being, yeah, we're trying to be creative with it. We like it. Um, obviously, I, I'm, I don't like that I have to wear pants now um, <laughs> because, you know, I, you know, I'm so used to, you know, giving, the, giving away the secret. Like, you know, when we had desks and being able to wear jeans because you know we're going out and shooting and all that stuff it's very easy to rip a pair of suit pants uh but that's why we always wear jeans and a blazer and and, and kind of change them so at least i do you know uh i kind of kind of learned that from a lot of other sports guys i've worked with that's kind of the case um but now that you can see us from from head to toe it's it, having to wear pants is kind of annoying okay i'm going to throw this just real quick uh on our way out here i'm going to ask you just one simple question when I, well, when I was doing the stuff with four, you were there too, and I would see the phone books on the seats. Mm-hmm. How many people have to have phone books on the seats there? Are there are a lot of people with phone books on the seats. We don't we don't sit anymore. What are you talking about? We don't oh, sit anymore. True. We don't have we every everybody's standing the entire newscast now. And the reason uh, I bring this up because for people wondering, so there's a lot of short people in news. <laughs> There's a, I, I didn't realize this. I remember one I day. I never understood the phone book thing because the, the chairs went up. So I didn't understand. I, I don't know if the chair going up was not enough, uh, but yeah, there was the phone book thing for, for certain people. That, yeah. And there, there are some guys you think, man, that guy's jacked. He looks great on TV, you know? And then, and then they opened the door. First time I was at channel four, uh, I was walking in the door. Oh, excuse me. One second. Uh, yeah, got, someone, someone heard that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, first time, I'm walking into channel four and the guy opens the door. I'm not going to name names, but he opens the door and he was probably to middle of my chest and I'm only six one and he's right there. And I'm like, you're a little taller than six one, aren't you? Well, with heels. And, uh, but yeah, that, that was an amazing thing. Cause, um, I, I never thought he was, uh, you never thought short small. people existed or short people who are on television. Well, you just, that- you know, they, they look taller. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, it, it was amazing, and, and uh, but yeah, the set looked beautiful. I saw some because you know you can't really tell when you're watching TV how big a set is or how how well it looks until you see pictures of it up from a wider angle, and it looked really nice and, and uh, very impressive. So yeah, yeah, we're seeing, you know, like I said, we're still playing with it um, to try to figure out like all the create creative elements behind it. But I think um, you know it's certainly better than doing it from my sports closet. Um, which yeah. which was interesting and fun for a while but certainly when you're trying to do a high school football season it doesn't add uh, creativity but uh, by the and way can helps. i give can i give a couple shout outs to, yeah, to my two members of my sports team uh how good of a job are erica ross and monica deonda doing right now uh, and monica we pulled her out of news to to help us out with sports during football season and uh, she's got a little sports background from her time in uh 
in Southern California, she worked for the network or, or something along that. Like she would write out highlights and cut out, cut up highlights for the sports team. And when I found that out, I was like, you know, we'll throw her out there. And I, I think, I think, you know, Erica's obviously been doing a great job since obviously before I got here, but uh, to be able to pull Monica out and have two female sports reporters out there um, covering this, uh, covering this thing from, from, uh, from Roma all the way to Brownsville has been, has been really, really cool to see. I will, I will say this because about when I did have the business, um, I really thought that there needed to be more women in sports. And it's nice that you guys, uh, you know, the other the other channels are doing it as well. I think it's important because there's so many, so many girls, young women coming up uh, as somebody with a bunch of daughters. Uh, I think it's important to see have have them see that women can do sports, and I think that they're doing a tremendous job because, um, you know, uh, the valley it took a while, but now the valley it's you know they're 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 working it though. Yeah. Um... Yeah, man, I, I I agree. I agree. One thing that's been weird for me this week too is is realizing that um that I'm 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 the old guy now. I am the old sports guy now in town. It's Very, weird. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I I, mean, I told you I mean, how I felt when it's I was because it's more so because you're you're out of the game, right? Yeah. So, uh, but no, but I will tell you this, and that that was one thing that and put it, things in place. I went to Brownsville, St. Joe's. Uh, a few weeks back or uh, right when the season was starting and you know things have passed you by especially for me i thought oh you know what i haven't been in it for a while i'm gonna just go see how it feels it felt awkward it it really did for me and you know i i know greg silver's still kicking it out there but greg's a mainstay um but for me i felt it felt a little awkward because everybody was so much younger and and a ways younger so but yeah um yeah, you are pretty old. Yeah, I'm getting getting there, man. I'm getting there. That's why I got to keep my hair short because then because the the, the 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 salt and pepper looks a little bit better when it's when it's shorter. Like yeah, that. it works for Gerardo, Rivetta. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, hey Alex, thanks for doing the show today. Um, he's Alex Del Barrio from KRGV Five Sports or Channel Five Sports, and uh, I'm uh, McAllen ISD employee, as some people put on emails. Uh, Jake Barry. <laughs> <laughs> so that's just a shot but uh but yeah th- thanks for watching and we'll be back next week with a little bit uh probably um uh, more scripted stuff so yeah. th- thanks a lot more, Alex. more scripted stuff yeah all right later man thanks bye